Informatica video KB series. My name is Abhijit. Today we are going to know more about the Informatica data replication service of Informatica Cloud and how it can help you get data from salesforce.com sources or from database sources to a target database without having to worry about creation of the target tables and the data types, etc. By the end of this demo, we will come to know how to create a data replication task and the different options available under that. Data replication is available on Informatica Cloud from under Applications, Data Replication. We will kick off the new wizard. We have to give a name of the job. That would be SFDC Test DRS Demo. DRS is for Data Replication Service. I'll select my salesforce.com source. Click on test. Connection is good. Now the objects to replicate here, I can either select all objects so that all the objects of salesforce.com are loaded to your target table one by one. This includes the custom objects as well. In my case, I will leave it as selected objects and I'll select the objects I want to replicate. I would want the account object and maybe the contact object to be replicated. This option is about processing of the object if there is uh, some issue. For example, if I get a query failed issue for on the account object, do I want to continue run the contact object or do I want to stop processing? I would say that I want to continue processing of my contact object even if there is an error on my account object during replication. This option enables the query all SOQL query on salesforce.com when the SOQL is sent to Salesforce. The next is the target section. The target section is where we go ahead and create, uh, select the connection where we can write our uh, data to. Now this can either be SIL, um, SQL Server, MySQL or Oracle targets. I will select SQL's, my local SQL Server instance here. View it. Looks good. I'll test the connection to confirm it works. It does. The target prefix is what determines how is the target uh, going to be created. What is the target table name? I can just leave this as Salesforce underscore. Now I can just leave it as Salesforce and what will happen is when the target is being created, it would be created as Salesforce account, Salesforce contact, etc. I will select SFDC underscore so that tables are created as SFDC account, SFDC contact. These are the options. The load type determines the incremental load or full load. So incremental load will only work for salesforce.com sources. And for salesforce.com sources, Informatica Cloud can determine if there is something changed on salesforce.com since the last execution. The changes can include delete, updates, or new records created on salesforce.com. If I select the full load, then the data will be loaded completely into my uh, target. With without doing any incremental calculations. Basically, it will just be a truncate and load of the data. Then we have the delete options where we either select remove deleted columns and rows or retain. For example, if there is a record deleted from Salesforce, if I select remove, the data will be removed from my target database as well, from my target table as well. However, if the second option, retain deleted columns and rows is selected, the record will not be deleted from my target table. There will be a field for is deleted. It will just be changed as true or one. I'll leave it as retain and incremental load so that we can get change data capture or delta capture. The next is field exclusions. The field exclusions helps us to exclude fields that we don't want for archiving purposes. For example, if I am doing a production load of my data to salesforce.com, Hmm, this guy has given me an error message when trying to go to the next one because there is another job which is replicating the same uh, object from salesforce.com with the same prefix. So there cannot be two tables which are SFDC underscore account on the same database and hence the problem. I'll select this as DRS underscore. So my tables are created as DRS underscore account and DRS underscore contact. Click on next. The field exclusions. For example, in my account object, as I want to load only production data and uh, I don't want fields that are not needed for my production data, I'll go ahead and deselect these fields which have been added by a custom application 
on mysalesforce.com. We can do the same for the contact object as well. Select all the fields, scroll down, go here. That's it. These fields have been have been excluded from the replication task and will not be replicated. As simple as that. Then we have the data filter section where we can either determine if we want to process all rows or if we want to limit the number of rows to certain number of records. For all intents and purposes, we will leave it as process all rows because we want all the data from salesforce.com. We can also put a filter here based on whatever condition we want. For example, account uh, name including Informatica, info. We can select that or we can set something else. In this case, I don't want any filters. I want the whole data, so I'll leave it as it is. Next, we are on the fifth and the last step of the data replication task where we can either determine to run the job on demand or we can run it on a schedule. Extensive options are available on the schedule. We can either select uh, to run it every five minutes, every 10 minutes, every hour, every weekday. All the options are available here. Then we are on email notification options. Either we select the default options that are available for the complete org available under administration organization or we can select only certain uh, uh, email addresses where we can send this email. So in this case only for this job I would you know I can send it to my email address. In this case I'll leave it as default. Next is the high precision calculation. This is used for some calculated fields on salesforce.com which can have data more than the defined precision. In some cases for calculated fields uh, the uh, GUI or the Salesforce metadata might have a precision or data type defined as 16 comma 2 meaning 16 digits before decimal and 2 after. In certain cases the API might return the data as much higher. On the GUI it might be showing as 100 but coming back from the API it might be 99.99 followed by 10 nines. Now when this type of data is trying to be loaded to the target table it will not be loaded because the target table was created based on the metadata which was 16 comma 2 and anything more than two decimals after two digits after decimal will not be accepted and hence the data will be rejected however if we select true here the data can be handled same thing uh, we have our pre-processing commands as well again an advanced option here we can define if we want to run a particular batch before batch file before the job starts I can just give the location of the batch file c colon batch dot bat and it will run the same thing applies for post processing one of the business use cases for post processing would be to maybe archive records uh, archive your logs that are generated from the data replication task the last option here is the maximum base 64 size which determines what is the maximum size of attachments you're getting from getting from salesforce.com by default salesforce.com has a size limit of 5 megabytes but in certain cases they can go ahead and increase that in our case it will be default 7 megs and if you want it can be changed here to 10 megs or however you want it in this case we will leave it as default 7 megs and we are good here so our job is almost complete we will click on save And here we go. Our task has been created as SFDC test DRS demo. Let me quickly go ahead and find the job so that we can execute it and ensure it is running fine. Here we go. Everything is sorted in alphabetical order. And we can run the job using the run now button. So we have our job running now. So this is the normal mode and this is the detailed mode. Here we can see how many records are being loaded in real time. This page refreshes every five seconds, but we can click on refresh here to manually refresh it. Here we go. The account object, the account, uh, the table has been created on uh, my target uh, table as a DRS underscore account and 11 records loaded. All the records in my account object next will be contact and looks like it has completed already. And here we go. 30 records have been successfully loaded out of which 19 are for the account object and uh, sorry 11 are for the account object and 19 for the contact object. Now if I restart this job I'm expecting to see only zero records to come from uh, my salesforce.com the reason being between these two executions my running the job now and in the next one minute when I run I go ahead and run the job I have not changed anything on salesforce.com hence I'm expecting only zero records I can restart the job here or I can go to home activity log and restart it here as well 
as soon as I have clicked on restart, the system, the data replication task, will find out what was the time that the job was run last on Informatica Cloud and do a compare on Salesforce.com on the system op system mod stamp field and the created date field. With the system mod stamp field, it will identify if there have been any updates on Salesforce.com since the last run of this job. And with the created date field, it will identify if anything has been added on Salesforce.com, anything inserted on Salesforce.com. Now in this case, nothing was added or updated and hence we have zero records. So here was a demo of the Informatica Cloud uh, data replication service which can be used to archive your data uh, from salesforce.com to a database for reporting purposes so that you don't use the salesforce.com API. There are many other uses that you can use the data replication uh, service for. Thank you for your time. Please uh, contact us. If you have any questions, you can contact us on support videos at informatica.com or you can follow our Twitter channel on InfoSupport. Thank you for your time. Have a good day.